if you grew up in the 80s or 90s, there's a real good chance that you remember this. I know 20,000 leagues under the sea, 40 nights and 40 days. I hung and bung on the Titanic and Hercules. This is where the power lies. Hulk Hogan was, and likely still is, one of the premier names in wrestling, rising to worldwide super fame in the early 80s. But we're not here to talk about Hulk's wrestling career. Oh no. We're here to talk about how he went from those fictional fights in the squared circle to a completely fictional life in the real world. I was really flying 300 days a year. 300 days and, a year. And I was wrestling 400 to 450 times a year. Hulk Hogan likes to say things like this on podcasts, which is a slightly different and updated lie from the one he originally told in his autobiography, My Life Outside the Ring, a book that was published in 2009. The version you've just heard sounds slightly more believable than the original quote from the book he wrote, which said, and I quote, If I say I wrestled 400 days a year, it's no exaggeration. My years were actually longer than 365 days. There were times when I'd fly back and forth to Japan twice a week just to wrestle. Now it was nothing to wrestle in Madison Square Garden one day, then fly all the way to the Egg Dome in Tokyo the same day, because you'd gain 14 hours, and then fly back to the West Coast and so on. So I could wrestle in Japan today, and then fly back across the international date line and land in another town yesterday. I was constantly adding days to my years. This, of course, if you couldn't tell from me being almost incapable of reading it with a straight face, is a completely mathematically impossible scenario. However, cutting Hulk Hogan some slack here, you could say maybe he just exaggerated the one or two times he had to fly to different time zones. Unfortunately, as with most stories Hulk tells, even that would probably be a lie. You see, Hulk Hogan, as far as I can find, never fought in Madison Square Garden one day and the Egg Dome in Tokyo the next. So it raises the question, why? Why lie about this when people can easily fact check? And that's the real question, one that's really hard to answer because unlike many other liars, Hulk Hogan doesn't seem to be delusional or crazy. He's actually acknowledged his lies many times and even backed down on them when forced to do so, such as the time he claimed to have a 10 inch penis, which is a it's a fucking wild story in and of itself. Basically, Hulk Hogan was involved in a sex tape scandal back in 2007, where he was recorded having sex with his friend's wife. Not his fault, of course. I mean, who hasn't gone over to their friend's house, had sex with their wife while the friend is present, and then realized that these friends are actually recording you in order to try and blackmail you later. This whole situation came to light when it was leaked to Gorka, who then, as fantastically ethical journalists would do, posted some of the clip online, which then led to Hulk Hogan suing them for invasion of privacy, asking for $100 million in damages. That's exactly how a conversation about Hulk's penis ended up in national news and written into the history of civil lawsuits in the state of Florida. When Hulk was cross-examined by Gorka's lawyers, I doubt he was expecting to hear this. Let me ask you this. Just let's see if we can simplify this. Do you have any doubt as you sit in that witness stand today that you were discussing the length of your penis on Bubba's radio program? Any doubt? Well, it's not mine because mine isn't that size, but we were discussing the length of Hulk Hogan's. Seriously? So. You, you no, seriously, I do, I do not have a 10 inch penis. No, I do not. Seriously. This clip and the entire scenario is the man behind Hulk Hogan, Terry Bollea, essentially saying that he and Hulk Hogan are two separate entities and that Hulk Hogan has a 10 inch penis while he, Terry, does not. I'm not even sure where I'm going with this point. I just really wanted to include the fact Hulk Hogan had to take the standing court and talk about the size of his dick. But let's just go back to the crazy stories Hulk Hogan tells about himself, whether in video, on podcasts, or in his book. Now, I'm not sure I need to tell you all who Mike Tyson is, right? Heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike, one of the most savagely brutal knockout artists in the world of boxing during his career. Well, Mike Tyson and Hulk Hogan were apparently going to fight each other in a wrestling match 
back in the day. You were going to fight Tyson. Bro, it's gonna be, we were looking at about the first $100 million pay-per-view ever. And, and you and Tyson had the, had the I paper was, signed, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I was Well, we were close. Vince was whining and dining him. Now, this scenario is surprisingly, unlike most things Hulk Hogan says, true. Mike and Hulk were going to have a match. But after it fell through, Hulk decided to start telling people that Mike Tyson was scared of him, which is just a hilarious thing to say considering Hulk Hogan is a wrestler and Mike Tyson was a heavyweight championship boxer. Which of course isn't to say Hulk was unathletic or not strong, but obviously he's not involved in any real combat sports and Mike was an animal. This story is just a very easy way to segue into the many lies about Hulk Hogan's real, you know, macho manly abilities and his combat prowess, which funnily enough makes this Mike Tyson story seem like one of the more believable ones. So how about the time Hulk Hogan claimed that during a match in Japan, he beat Japanese wrestler Antonio Inoki so badly that he died, was brought back to life by CPR, and Hulk had to immediately flee Japan due to the Yakuza coming after him, which of course never happened. And Hulk Hogan returned to Japan many times over the years, which is a real weird story considering the match was televised and you can even watch it online now. Nobody died. So how about the time when Hulk said he used to wrestle pride fighters in Japan back in the late 70s, which would mean Hulk was battling some real legit fighters. The only problem with this claim of course, is that pride didn't even exist until 1997, over 20 years after Hulk claimed to have fought these people. Now I don't know if Hulk Hogan doesn't know that the internet exists or television, or if he thinks Japan's far enough away that he can just live a completely alternate life there and nobody would know, and maybe that's why he constantly lied about things he did in Japan as if it was another dimension, a black hole of information. But considering the next things we're going to talk about happened closer to home, I'm not really sure that's the case either, especially since stories like this next one don't lie about things that are far removed and instead some of the most popular icons on the planet. Such as when he said Elvis, yes that Elvis, the king of rock and roll, was a huge Hulk Hogan fan, which Hulk lovingly refers to as Hulkamaniacs. So apparently Elvis used to come to his shows in Memphis, which is interesting since Hulk Hogan didn't wrestle in Memphis until 1979, Conveniently, Elvis died two years prior in 1977. And you might think maybe he's just getting the dates mixed up and this is some offhand comment he made, but he wrote this in his autobiography to exist in print for eternity. So we either knew people were going to figure out he was lying very quickly and put two and two together, or maybe he's about to tell us that he's actually a necromancer and that he would routinely revive popular musicians to come hang out at his shows since he knew that they were such fans and even in death they wouldn't want to miss the chance to see his performance in the ring. Now this might seem like an unfortunate segue, but I will tell you it came about almost entirely by accident. Hulk Hogan isn't just a liar. Hulk Hogan has done a lot of good work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He has taken time out of his life to give sick kids their potentially dying wish to meet the legendary superstar of wrestling. Long story, I'll make it short. I was in Wembley Stadium and I saw a lot of Make-A-Wish kids. I had a kid there that was in, in rough shape. He, the EMTs were with him and he was on a stretcher. And, you know, his, his body odor and stuff, it had a, a smell to it that I, I hadn't smelled in a while. Not bad, but it was just a different type of smell. And I really wasn't sure what it was. And the parents were freaking out. They were Hulkamaniacs. And I told the doctors and the EMTs, you know, the, the kids in kind of trouble here, you know. So let me say my goodbyes and give him a hug and kiss him. And and I got a nice place for him out at ringside at Wembley Stadium. It's all roped off. So I went to wrestle and I kept looking. I kept looking and the kid wasn't there. So when I came back from wrestling, I was the last person to wrestle the main event. I said, what happened to the family out there? And they said, well, the kid passed away. So when I found out the kid passed away, my manager, Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South, he used to be in a band too. And he had a couple of number one hit songs here in the States. And I played music before. So we stayed up all night and we wrote 12 songs for the kid's family. And what you need to understand about Hulk Hogan and most of the stuff I've said in this video so far is that none of it's really that big of a deal, right? I mean, it's just grandstanding about how macho he is. You know, I've got a huge penis. I beat up loads of really strong men. The most savage men on the planet are scared of me. I'm such a hard worker that I transcend space and time to work harder than the natural flow of time in our known universe. Small things like that. 
But then it's a real shame when you discover that this story about a dying child is also completely fake. You see, the wrestling promotion Hulk worked for only ever did one show in Wembley Stadium. And if you go to the wiki for this show and do a quick control F search for old Hulk's name, you'll conveniently notice that you hear the distinct sound that indicates it isn't able to find anything. And that is because Hulk Hogan never wrestled at Wembley Stadium, which means this man went on a wrestling interview knowing that wrestling superfans would be able to immediately call out that the entire premise of his story is a lie and proceeded to describe in strange detail about smelling a dying kid how the kid's parents were such hulkamaniacs they were paying more attention to him and his fame than they were the kid that was dying and then the kid dying moments later it's a real head scratcher of a story because you're thinking well why would you ever tell this even if it was true why would you say this publicly but funnily enough, it actually gets answered in the next clip, which also segues into the many lies about Hulk Hogan's music career. And Jimmy um, knew somebody from Select Records, and he, they got a home to hold a sign on Cal. He produced a little album for us, and it went number one on Billboard for eight weeks. And we gave, donated the money to the family. And then Simon came back to me and said, we need to do the song with a band called Green Jelly over in the UK and something called Leader of the Gang, a Gary Glitter song. And so that did really well on Billboard too. So when I came back to the States, I had the crazy idea since I was wrestling, maybe we should do music here. So I grabbed Cindy Glopper and Rick Derringer and a bunch of people and we recut a bunch of songs, Land of a Thousand Dances and stuff. And Simon came over and helped produce the wrestling album. Now there's a few issues with the rest of this story. And that is to say, none of it's remotely true. You see the song he refers to here is Hulkster in Heaven, which didn't come out in 1992, which is when the Wembley Stadium event happened. It came out in 1995. And in the song lyrics, well, actually just listen to it. Here you go. I guess I'll be one empty seat. So he's recorded in history a song which we've established didn't happen and it also didn't reach number one on Billboard as Hulk said. The album did reach number 12 on Billboard Kids so maybe Hulk was just confused or his ego doesn't allow him to recognize the number two he can only be number one so the 12 actually just morphed in his brain to be number one and just skipped onto a completely different Billboard list entirely. And one other small detail is that Simon Cowell didn't produce these wrestling albums. He did produce the 1993 WrestleMania album, which Hulk, according to the Wikipedia article, has no credits in. Also, this statement... Then he came and produced the second wrestling album, Pile Driver, and he never left. ...doesn't make a ton of sense considering Pile Driver came out seven years before these events happened and not in the future like Hulk's saying. So this entire story is essentially using the death of a fake child from a terrible illness in order to claim some kind of credit for helping Simon Cowell become famous, which is a mad story in and of itself. But funnily enough, not Hulk Hogan's only lie about music. The other really famous one he still tells to this day is how he was big pals with Lars Ulrich, the drummer and co-founder of Metallica, and how Lars Ulrich had asked Hulk Hogan if he wanted to come play bass for the band back in the early days, but how it didn't really work out. Which becomes hilarious when Howard Stern then asks Lars Ulrich himself, who had the classy reaction to the news, basically saying he doesn't even know who Hulk Hogan is, but not going so far as to totally wreck the man in the process as a true professional would. Hulk then of course saw this, and when people asked him about it again, completely changed the story forgetting the fact that people had already got him quoted as saying something totally different. He changed it this time saying he made tapes of himself playing and tried to contact Metallica management repeatedly, which is a very far story from being big pals with the founder and being asked directly to join. So I think we end it here because we, we could be telling these stories all day. I mean, I didn't even touch on the time Hulk Hogan says he was repeatedly offered the lead role for the movie titled The Wrestler, which was eventually taken over by Mickey Rourke, who went on to take home awards for the performance. Hulk claimed to have been sent the script repeatedly, and this never happened, just like pretty much every other story Hulk Hogan tells. 
This was of course confirmed by the creator of the wrestler Darren Aronofsky who said not a single script was ever sent to Hulk Hogan. I'm not going to end the video yet. This this one's the last one, I swear. Okay, Hulk Hogan, why do you do these things? You're a legend. Please stop. Just just be famous for all the things that actually happened. I wrestled Andre the Giant with these boots on, and then a couple days later, he passed on. So this one's particularly egregious because he did wrestle Andre the Giant multiple times, and he did wear those boots. But that was on March 27th, 1988. Andre the Giant died on January 28th, 1993 five years later. So unless Hulk was confessing to strapping himself up into these boots in his little wrestling pants and then assaulting Andre the Giant in his final few days of life, this is again another provable lie and one that he told totally apropos of nothing in an MTV Cribs episode. I'm just really shocked that this man lies publicly about things so often and nobody just says, Hulk, you, you know, we know that's not true, mate. That's a lie. But yeah, either way, that's the video. Thanks for watching.